The Morning Dish. He's the hardest working man in show business. His band's music takes you into the midnight hours. And when you wake up, his voice is back on your radio alarm clock. How on earth did this happen? Well, Jeff saw me taking out the trash at the radio station. And he won another award. But this one is better. I'm your it's the Morning Dish with the 2019 Radio Personality of the Year winner, Stephen Phillips. You paying attention to this, Packy? And as long as Pat Malone is already out of bed. Then I might as well ride herd around here. Well, giddy up. <laughs> and Packy Smith is still special, too. You guys know these demo tapes don't just edit themselves together, right? Well, all right. Three cheers for Stephen Phillips. Y'all need to help Stephen Phillips out over there. Out the door and off the radio. Here's Stephen Phillips. All righty, folks, we're coming into you sideways. I have no idea about this show today because before the show, we were sitting out there waiting for Harry and him to get off, and we had uh, Jim Richter and Packy singing Lola together like a duet. Weirdest thing ever. It's a beautiful love song, isn't it, Stephen? It's, it's your theme. Well, it sounded like Biden singing happy birthday to Martin Luther King. I couldn't remember the words. They loved the, but they got that chorus, boys. They got the chorus down good. Jim, how are you? We got Jim Richard I'm doing good. It's a, it's a nice day. It's cold outside, but the sun is shining. Yeah. It's a beautiful morning. How about you there, Pat? How's your world? Hey, it's beautiful up here, too. Yeah, we yeah. actually you had the nine one one dispatcher guy on here earlier. We did. Oh, he's oh, got a lot of good information there. <laughs> we was talking to him. I reckon he's got a big master's degree in radio. We was trying to uh, hire him over here. And then All he right. found out who he'd be working with, and that was that put the kibosh on that one. Yeah, he yeah. declined, right? Well, we told him. We said, you know, what, you fit right in because we put as many people on hold as they do. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yeah, he didn't want no part of it. At all. I wonder I reckon, why. Born this day in Clarksdale, Georgia. Guess who? Ray Stevens. Guitar. Ray no, wait Stevens. a second. Everything right. is beautiful. I was thinking after that Lola song, oh, yeah, they call him the streak. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> Fastest thing on two. Y'all remember? Ahab the Arab. You remember back in the day, that was a big thing. Oh, yeah. Everybody would streak. Speak for yourself. Yeah, they'd run around streaking with. Well, he wearing nothing but his tennis shoes. Don't look at them. Too late. She done had a clean shot. Can't get by with uh, Pat. Did you ever streak back in the day? I was back near the time. Uh, I don't know what that is. Streaking. 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 Yeah, where people were running around in public naked, buck naked. They were running around wide open. They just run that, down the road. That is not a pretty picture. No, I never did that. Sorry. Thank goodness. Well, I'll tell you yeah. what, nowadays it'd be rough because everybody's got cameras and you'd be viral. Yeah, you'd be viral. I like Ray minute. Stevens, though. You know, he's wrote a lot of cool songs. Of course, people always remember the silly songs that he wrote, you know. And uh, But, uh, yeah, he's from uh, Clarksdale, Georgia. Still out there. He's got a place up in Nashville, I think, don't he? Like a piano bar or something? I don't know. I think so. I think he does. Yep. Neil Diamond is 82 years old today. There's, old a, there's another famous songwriter. Yeah, he's not. Mm -hmm. I think he quit, didn't he? I mean, he retired. Well, with the money he's made, he can probably afford to do it. There's a lot of them guys out there, though, just don't quit. It's just like, you know, it's in them and they just can't get. Of course, it's, you know, it's a thrill to be out there with the fans and all that. But I don't know. I'm, I I like Neil Diamond. Yeah, he's, he's written some really good songs. Songs on blue. Some of the words. <laughs> America. Lyrics. Right? Yeah. Didn't he write America? Yeah. I don't know if he wrote it, but he did it. Yeah. And in 1953, Hank Williams was number one with the U.S. country charts with I'll Never Get Out of This World Alive. None of us do. And I reckon, you know, Waylon actually, you know, he kind of felt responsible there. He, Because uh, he's, we was just a kid when that came out. And he said, hey, man, what would it be if he passed away when this song was number one? And he actually did. And uh, Waylon thought. You know, of course, he's just a little kid. He said he thought for a long time he was the one that caused him to pass away because he put that omen on him or well, something. Well, that's one way of going out on top. Yeah. Yeah. On 1947, Earned Warren Zevon was born. Oh, Warren Zevon. Yes. What was that song he did? Werewolves of London. Werewolves and of London. Lawyers, Guns, and Money. I love that tune. There that, you go. That werewolf. Ernest Borgnine was born on this date. You know who that is, Stephen? Ernest Borgnine. 
Yeah, yeah. I do, but I can't remember. McHale's Navy. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's Marty. Right. Yeah. 68. Marty, right. He won an Academy Award for that film. He did. Murr okay. Haggard, he was number one with Sing Me Back Home in 1968. That's back when music was great. 1918, Oral Roberts was born. You, you. <laughs> Which one is he now? He founded Oral Roberts College out in Oklahoma. He was one of there those televangelists. I know that, guys. but is he one of them healing kind like that dude's got that funky looking hair? I think he had kind of funky looking hair. Did he? On this day, wasn't he one of the first televangelists? I think so, yeah. One yeah. of the earliest pioneers. He ain't the one that got in all that trouble, was he? That was no. Jimmy Swaggart. Yeah. That's old swag. Old swag. Hey, in 1981, the Muppet Show starring Johnny Cash was broadcast. How about that? Johnny Cash on the, the Muppet Show. Yeah. He actually sang Ghost Riders in the Sky. It's like a kind of torture to have to watch the show. <laughs> Sharon, Sharon Tate was born on this day. So it was yep. Doug Kershaw, fiddle player. You know who yep. Doug Kershaw is. Yep. It was. Yep. Sure was. And in 2008, Dev, uh, Charlie Daniels, known for The Devil Went Down to Georgia, was inducted to the Grand Ole Opry. How about that? It took to 2008 to get him in the Grand Ole Opry. They throwing him in there now, right and left. I mean, they just, they got if they're breathing, they put them in there. I guess they're running out of folks or something, you know. 1949, your hero, John Belushi, was born. I like John Belushi. I like John Belushi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about Beth Hart? Do you know who she is? I don't know Beth Hart. She's a really good singer. I think you ought to check her out. She was born in 1972. What did she? What's a hit? What's something she had done? L.A. song, Screaming for My Supper. You might not know these songs. But I she's... know Screaming for My Supper, though. Emily's Supper ready? <laughs> 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 what be if you'd get in here and help me some? Yeah. National International Day of Education. There's something we need. International Day of Education. And here, pack beer can appreciation. I was about day. to say, and you know why that is? Because the first beer can, the first canned beer was put out. <clears throat> really? And it mm-hmm. was a cream ale. Mm. You know, back when we grew up, the, you'd pull the top off of them, and, and you had the little, it'd come off in your hand. You know what I'm saying? When you pop the top. You and you could make kind of a chain out of them. Yeah, we did all kinds of oh, stuff yeah. with yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then, I don't, why did they do away with them things? They got them where it does it. I guess people throwed them away or something, or maybe the chickens or know. something got a hold of them or something, but. Yeah, that's w- people used to cut their feet walking on the beach. Oh, that's place. right. Laying around. And because a bunch of sissies out there on the beach, we can't make chains like anymore. Like Jimmy Buffett. They yeah, were we, looking for their salt shaker. We stepped on a pop top. That's mm-hmm. it. That's it. That's mm-hmm. it. I didn't even mm-hmm. think about that. That's it. But we can't make necklaces and stuff now. If you was if you was a kid in my time, you everybody made necklaces out of pop tops. Or coke tops, we called them. But on ne- this day, uh 1965, Winston Churchill passed away. Mm. There you go. National oh. Peanut Butter Day. There's something I like. I like peanut butter. Now, when y'all make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, do y'all put the peanut butter on one side and the jelly on the other, or do y'all put it in a bowl, mix it up, and then put it on the bread? No, you put the peanut butter on one side first, and then you put the jelly on top of the peanut butter. I agree with that one. No, y'all don't know how to eat peanut butter. You got to put it in the. You got to put it, peanut butter in the jelly in a bowl, mix it up, and makes like a. Syrup. Does everything you eat have to be some form of a slop? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, belly belly up to the trough. Here. You just uh, uh, slop it on there, real slop. And you just y'all never tried a, that. Another dish that you have to wash. That's Why what would I'm you saying. do that? Why would you do that? Well, Why Stephen doesn't dish? care about that. That's woman's work. Isn't yeah. It? Oh. Yeah. Man. Woman's work. Yeah, I'm just telling you how to eat peanut uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's no belly laugh day. Global, global belly laugh day. So all you, Speaking, all you skinny folks out there that ain't got no belly, y'all, y'all ain't going to be able to belly laugh. Speaking of belly laughs, 1975, Larry of the Three Stooges died. I wasn't the big Three Stooges. You didn't like them? No, nah, what do they call that? Slap humor or something like slap stick. that? Slapstick. Uh, slapstick. Yeah, slapstick humor. I, I like Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, they were pretty good. I like Laurel and Hardy. But that, uh, I didn't know. Who did the who's on first, who's on second thing? I like them guys. What was their names? Uh, Evan Costello. Yeah, I like them. They were pretty good. Who's on first? I don't know who is on first. That was a great thing. Yeah. And on this day in 1989, Ted Bundy was uh, sent to meet his maker. Oh, Ted. Ted Bundy. Yep. Mm. That's yeah, a- this day in uh, ni- uh, 2018, he was uh uh, Larry Nasser was sentenced to uh, 175 years in prison for 
sexual assault on the uh, U.S. gymnastics team. Who was this now? Larry Nasser. I remember that. He was a doctor at Michigan State University who was the team doctor for U.S. gymnastics. And that was a pretty big deal because a lot of the folks wouldn't believe the girls that was saying this. Absolutely. Yeah. Until like 100 of them came forward and. Now maybe you know. they say, well, after a hundred of them, maybe I might ought to pay attention a little bit to this. That's crazy to me, ain't it? Yeah. I, I think I'd have jumped right on that, wouldn't you? Well, you what? know, there have been a lot of these cases where people just, it was kind of swept under the carpet or people didn't believe it or didn't want to talk about it. But finally something happens where it reaches a critical mass and all of a sudden people come forward. Yeah, it takes that. Yeah. yeah. But I really think his bosses should have been sentenced too. I'm with you. I mean, man. they they quit. They they resigned their job. Their president of Michigan State University resigned, and the entire board of the USAG resigned. But they should have been held accountable for su- not lack of supervision. Well, do, do you know if there was ever any civil litigation? There was against the organization, but yeah, not against yeah. the individuals. Uh oh! Across uh, from uh, Aunt Pearl's porch, we can't say Aunt Pearl's porch where they got all them great. Uh, Cinnamon rolls. Oh my goodness! We can't say anything. We can't about say it. that, right? Is that part of the Stephen Phillips power diet? That's and- it, man. The belly laugh today is a very special day. It's Mama's birthday. Debbie Reynolds, happy birthday! Happy birthday to her, man. I bet you she's gonna get a big old fancy cake from Aunt Pearl. I don't Port. think so. She ain't around anymore. I bet. Hey, Stephen, that's the wrong, Debbie Reynolds. Oh, your friend from Australia says peanut butter on one piece, jelly on the other. Are you kidding? This is a guy that eats that, uh, what's that stuff called? Uh, Vegemite. 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 I bet he puts Vegemite on that stuff. I tried it the other night. But he's got it on video. But that stuff's kind of like, a, I don't know, beef stock or something we call it over here. But it's made out of vegetables. But it's got it's like high in B. But, man, listen, Copperhead, mix that stuff up and try it like I do, man. I'm telling you, it's so much better. But, uh, anyway, we got to get to a break, folks. Today is Tuesday, right? Young Harris Water Sports. So if you're looking for a boat, if you ain't had your boat, if you didn't winterize your boat, you need to take it down there and trade it in on a new one because you, your motor's busted. I'll guarantee <laughs> you that. So anyway, but they got all kinds of accessories, uh, RVs, you name it, they've got it. So go check out Young Harris Water Sports. And now with more news for Western North Carolina and North Georgia, I'm Jeff Batten. The Clay County Sheriff's Office is looking for a man they say stole a truck from Mountain Building Supply early Monday morning and then abandoned it on Highway 64. Sheriff Mark Buchanan's press release notes that the thief hightailed it out of the yard, complete with a Dukes of Hazard style jump. Buchanan adds whimsically that the offender was either, quote, high enough or nice enough, unquote, to give the truck a bath before abandoning it. Please go to the WJRB Facebook page to see video of the man and call the Clay County Sheriff's Office if you know him. A young Harris woman is out on a $46,000 bond after law enforcement says she crossed the center line while under the influence and hit another vehicle head on. That wreck sent three to the hospital, including the accused, 38-year-old Christina Nastav. It happened last Tuesday in Union County at Track Rock Gap Road and Lindsay Lane. The Georgia State Patrol report says her Buick Enclave hit a Toyota van when she reached for her phone. No word on her injuries or those of the van occupants, James Clark and Teddy Clark of Blairsville. Nastav is charged with DUI, distracted driving, and other moving violations. Towns County's state senator has begun another term of helping push through the governor's legislation. I was very honored when I was asked to return as one of the governor's floor leaders in the Senate. That's Bo Hatchett talking with WJRB about his reappointment as floor leader and Brian Kemp's desire to return money to the taxpayers. You know, the governor is is working on returning a billion dollars to the taxpayers in Georgia for their income tax and over a billion dollars for property tax relief in the state of Georgia. Those are both bills that will have to pass this legislative session, and so I look forward to carrying that. And and both of those should have an impact on uh, Georgians and and specifically people in in my district. Please download the free WJRB app. For Pat Malone and Harry Bond, I'm Jeff Batten. Why suffer from wounds that won't heal due to diabetes, injury, surgery, or other causes? The new Wound Care Center at Erlanger Western Carolina Hospital helps difficult wounds heal, and it's right here in Murphy. Call 828-837-7166. Your feel better starts here. Your feel better starts with Healthy Smiles by Dr. B in Hayesville. Are you afraid or embarrassed to smile because of decayed or discolored teeth? 
Dr. B uses the latest white fillings, all porcelain crowns, and laser teeth whitening. Visit Healthy Smiles by DRB.com and get the beautiful smile you've always wanted so you can start feeling better about yourself. Call 828-360-3999 to make an appointment. Honey, what happened? You're all wet. I've been trying to find this dang leak. Why don't we call No, I got this. You always turn these things into a DIY. Why did you do that? I'm calling Grayland Leak Detection Service. Grayland has specialized equipment to pinpoint any leak, inside or underground, and fix it fast at a fraction of the cost of replacing your whole water service. Call Eric now at Grayland at 706-897-9110 or graylandleakdetection.com. Finally, our water bill looks normal again. When you're cold, they're cold. Rodents are looking for a place to keep warm this winter, and your attic could be their next home sweet home. Trust us, you don't want these guys as your house guests. They have some nasty habits, including chewing on wires, a major fire hazard that causes 20% of house fires in the U.S. Call American Pest for a free inspection. American Pest Control, serving your community. Text or call 706-782-4113 to schedule your free inspection. For older adults who enjoy their freedom, but need a helping hand with everyday life and activities. Whether independent living or assisted living is your desire, age in place at Brasstown Manor Senior Living. Enjoy the best in senior care, amenities, and dining in Hiawassee. Brasstown Manor is more than just a place to live. It's a fun, active community, a safe haven, and a lifestyle. Start your journey at BrasstownManor.com. It's a brand new year, and the compliments from WJUL and WJRB clients keep rolling in. I'm Dr. Andre Scheffler with Hillcrest Imaging in Blairsville. And even though I listen to the station every day, my staff was skeptical about doing the radio ads. Three months later, my staff tells me the commercials are already having significant positive impact on our business. You could say they're no longer skeptical about radio ads. If your business needs new customers this year, visit WJULradio.com or call the radio station because we've got them. Erlanger Orthopedics and Sports Medicine in Murphy is pleased to welcome Dr. Eric Clark to Western Carolina. Dr. Clark is now accepting new patients at 828-492-2146. That's 828-492-2146. The Morning Dish. The Tuesday Morning Dish is powered by Young Harris Water Sports. You want to deal with people who love boats? You've come to the right place. From a new covered storage facility to boat consignment services, it's all in one place with Young Harris Water Sports. All righty, folks, we're back with you. Hope everybody's doing good. I'm so glad that breaks over with because they're still do it and Lola in here and still ain't got the words right, but... Uh, <laughs> Please, somebody take me away. Calgonon, take me away. What the heck's going on with all this still here? Somebody stole a truck. It's always something going on, man. You said something about the... Did Dollar General down here got broken into? Really? Yeah. Like I don't last know why, night or something? why would anybody want to break into any stores or steal anything? This is the greatest economy in our lifetime. I it? know that, but I'm just saying, I hate Thank it. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. What would... Uh, when did that happen? Any idea? I, I think over the weekend, I think. Yeah. I don't know. A Dollar General? I mean, if I was going to break into something, it wouldn't be a Dollar General. <laughs> would you think? Well, where would you break into? I mean, you get a whole truckload of stuff, it wouldn't be about $25 worth. He'd go to the auto parts store. <laughs> That's where I'd go. Part. I guarantee you. I'd be loading up. Well, I what? don't know. I hate to think. They not realize that most folks up here carry guns. I mean, honestly. I don't know. There are a lot of newcomers up here that probably don't carry guns. I don't know. I know a lot of them carry guns coming in up here. They're like, we moved here just so we carry guns. <laughs> I love to see back in the old Wild West where everybody had one on their hip. You know what I'm saying? This town ain't big enough for the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> I tried that for a while. I had me one of them big 44s. You know what I'm saying? I strapped that thing on my leg. And I was walking around, but I, my little legs are so short, I wore the barrel off dragging on the ground. <laughs> so. <laughs> good grief. <laughs> that ain't no gun. It's a gun. Pat, y'all right out there? I, don't think, I am all right. Okay, we just checking. He's out. just in stunned disbelief about the intellectual yeah, level of this I just, conversation. I just stand back and wonder at you, Stephen. Well, now you're out there. Y'all having a lot of break-ins and stuff. I, well, hey, that's natural. I mean, all, you got all the dope addicts running around trying to get uh, enough money to buy their next hit. So there's a lot of burglaries like that. Yeah, I don't. We know. had it. You were talking about being armed. We had a story just. Two weeks ago, I think, down in LJ, a guy tried to stick up a QT. 
Uh, and three three customers in the store whipped out their guns and subdued him. There you go. Yeah. You don't want to be doing that stuff in LJ and a QT, boy. I'm telling you. They don't get they you. They subdued him. They subdued him. I'd at least they didn't to, shoot him. They just subdued him. I'd have shot him in the leg or something just to, yeah. you know, just yeah, to hear yeah. the bang. What do you think? You sound, you, you sound <laughs> just like for fun. Just for fun. Just for the fun of it. You sound just like Brandon. Who? Didn't he say the other day that he'd prefer police to shoot people in the leg to wound them instead of dead Did he, did no, he say if that? I a, if I was a cop, yeah. I'd have shot him for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Man, we had that thing over here at Tom about in Cherokee. That's a pretty big deal, man. I reckon that video went viral where they went in on that guy. It's everywhere. It's everywhere, man. I don't know the whole scoop on that, but I'll have to check that one out. It's a, it's a really bad situation because he was unarmed and uh, there was no domestic abuse or guns going off because they were in bed when they got raided. I just think if you watch the video, the, it's not funny, but it, the funny thing is the guy gets the first thing he does, gets out of bed and lights Lots up a cigarette, smoke. man. He's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he don't even get out of the bed before he wrote, wrote, lights one up. You know, and the sheriff issued a uh, statement that this is the reason he needs his own tactical force, right. and he was going to ask the commissioners for it. I expected him to be at the commission meeting last night making the request. He was there, but there was not nothing on the agenda. Bob. So, who was the tactical force? They they came from the Cherokee Reservation. They were the uh, Cherokee Police. Oh, okay. That they, they have a, their own SWAT team, and the sheriff called them right because it was supposed to be a hostage situation, and um, just got out of control. I guess nobody was really in charge. It doesn't sound like. I don't know. Somebody was. I'll tell you one thing. That gal that was in there, his wife, it's a wonder she didn't. I mean, they were bullets flying everywhere, and she was trying to help her whole man back up. And, yeah. yeah. And man, I mean, you see bullets coming through the wind and everything else, so I don't know. But it was a Cherokee. It was actually the Cherokee Indian Reservation that come down. And So who it, was this it guy? Was, it was their SWAT team that came down. So yeah. who was this guy? Who was he? I, just a regular citizen, right? I mean, he wasn't doing anything wrong, as far as I can tell. Do yeah. we know but, why somebody called in on him? And was it one of these things where, um, <sighs> you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, no matter what you think of her one way or the other, she's been swatted five or six times where some anonymous caller will call into 911, oh, there's there's gunfire at, you know, 123 Main Street. You need to get out there. And it turns out basically they're – Giving nine one one Marjorie Taylor Greene's address and sending the SWAT team out there on her. Yeah, Jim, it's funny you should mention that because that was the first thought that uh, that I had that somebody had swatted this guy. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I yeah. actually had a little bit of an incident like that a couple of years ago. There was a. Well, what did you say on the radio well, to deserve it? There was a ne- there was a, a next door. There's this place it sold and it had this old barn and and these folks come in from california because they'd sold the property and they just wanted to go through that old barn it's about fell down you know and uh just kind of see if there's anything to get like memorabilia from the old folks and all that kind of stuff and so this lady from from california stand out there and and it just happened to be when dylan come in from work and uh, you know dylan he does a lot of target shooting and he just traded up a gun and and it was right behind where the barn's at and so he come in and he put his you know his ear things in and and shot that gun about six or eight times and then got back in his little mud buggy <clears throat> went on up on the mountain well that lady there from california never had been around and it was just right there next to her and she thought somebody was shooting at her and her husband was still in the in the house which was dilapidated and he stuck his head out when all the shooting started and she was standing there in that door and she passed out because she was so scared i'm not kidding you and so he calls 911 and says look somebody just shot my wife oh. We had oh, we geez. had everybody you could think of, man. They're at my house. They're like freaking out. Like, Y'all been doing any shooting? I'm like, well, yeah, around here probably so. Yeah, what's going on? You know, but she just passed out. But that was a pretty big deal there for about a couple of hours. You know, yeah, pretty big deal. But man, I wish we'd had that on video. California. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? Man? She was just, yeah, she passed out right when the shooting started, and her husband thought, I don't guess that's so funny now, but. At the time, we thought it was hilarious. Now the cops didn't think it's funny at all. But well, that's the point. This call came in as domestic abuse, and those are the most dangerous ones, according to the law officers I know. I agree with that. I understand that is right. Yep. Yeah, 
So, and that's where most of the incidents happens with the domestic. They were probably on full alert and maybe just a little too quick on the trigger. But I do wonder, though, why. So they said that they didn't have a SWAT team of their own, but they somebody said they couldn't get them to come to the door. Is, was that true or no? No, he came to the door. That's no, no, how he I, got no, shot. I, mean, I saw the video. I know that, but I'm saying, but why? So it was the immediate response was to call the SWAT team? I, I don't know why they called the SWAT team. I mean, yeah, I thought uh, they went out there before to try to, and they couldn't get nobody yeah, in the door. Or something. Well, just, he, was, he was sleeping, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea, but there's there's more to that to come out. The national, all the national media is involved with it now. Oh so. yeah, we can trust the national media. I can't yeah, guarantee you that. Yeah. Now we'll know the rest of the story if all Harvey says. We need some analysis on this. Yeah, we, we can't judge for ourselves by watching the video. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. need somebody. What they actually happened? But what happened at the end, though? You kind of that, and that's funny because the video is actually chopped off. If you look on Twitter and all that kind of stuff, like the beginning of the video is chopped off and the very end. So if you find the full five minute video, there's right. you know, like when they see the camera at the end, it's a oh, uh, uh, camera, camera, uh, camera, camera. I heard camera. them say that. Isn't there something like that? I think they are. But now I ain't going. Can I speculate on that? Uh, keep me out of prison here, Jim. You're my lawyer. I'm speculating. I cannot okay. give you any warranties, express or implied. <laughs> Give me another. Please, please sign this document right here. I'm going to call Daniel Duello. He'll get me out. He can't help you either. He'll get me out. He won't bail you out. Daniel, you listening? I need some help over here. Anyway, we got to get to another break. Young Harris Water Sports to bring you the show today. So if y'all need a if y'all need a boat or you need an RV or accessories or anything to go along down that line, give them a call, Young Harris Water Sports. Young Harris Water Sports and RV, now offering the Supreme Surf Boat Line, along with Hurricane Deck Boats, Godfrey Pontoons, Monterey, Chaparral, Bayliner Bow Riders, Low Pontoons, along with both Yamaha and Sea-Doo PWCs and more. Young Harris Water Sports and RV has the area's largest service center, parts and accessory selection, so there's no need to leave the mountains. <laughs> Young Harris Water Sports and RV at 3676 Highway 76, online at yhmarineandrv.com. Let's go! Why is McDonald's breakfast the most important meal of the day? Because it sets the tempo for the rest of my day. A little slower, please. I can mix and match two of my breakfast go-tos, like a sausage biscuit, chicken McGriddles, sausage McMuffin, or hash browns for only $2.29. And top it all off with a bold and delicious iced coffee in any size for just $1.69. All right, let's speed it up. I've got work to do. ba da ba 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 Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price. Looking for buying or selling real estate in the mountains? The Rick Andrews Real Estate Team is here to help. Our team of experts will guide you through the real estate process in the Northeast Georgia and Western North Carolina mountains from the moment you inquire until our last meeting. From luxury lakefront estates and beyond, we're here to make buying and selling a rewarding experience. Visit callrickandrews.com to see our listings or call the Rick Andrews Real Estate Team 828-557-9139. The Oaks Lakeside Kitchen invites you back to experience the warm Georgia welcome you've been missing and to taste your way through the locally crafted menu by Chef George. Relax around the dinner table with your friends and family with a curated cocktail at the Oaks Lakeside Kitchen. On the shores of Lake Chatoog, the Oaks Lakeside Kitchen welcomes you back. Reservations available at opentable.com. Dinner Friday through Tuesday, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Oaks Lakeside Kitchen. There are a lot of institutions that offer financial advice. So what's the difference? I'm Gary Anderson with Anderson Advisors and Young Harris. What sets me apart is the relationship that I have with my clients and the professionals I work with on a daily basis. There is no one-stop shop when it comes to planning for your future. It takes the team, and we can provide that at Anderson Advisors. Give us a call at 888-371-2847 or visit the website gary-anderson.com. Do you have eye problems? Ophthalmologist Dr. Dan Eichenbaum, a graduate of Yale Medical School and the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute, has the training and experience to give your precious eyes the expert care they need. Whether it's cataract surgery, macular degeneration, diabetic eye disease, or glaucoma, call Dr. Dan Eichenbaum, 828-837-5404 in Murphy or 706-745-9777 in Blairsville. Medicare and insurance accepted. Quality eye care, regardless of your ability to pay. The 
morning dish. Young Harris Water Sports says it may be Tuesday, but on the lake, every day's the weekend. Young Harris Water Sports is ranked number one in customer service and boasts the number one full marine service department in the mountain area. So make it the best Tuesday ever at Young Harris Water Sports. All righty, we're back with you. Hope everybody's doing good out there. And uh, we were talking about the shooting going on. We had a couple of phone calls uh, during the break, which... Uh, Speculation. What if, what if, what if, just what if, okay, Pat, you listen. What if this guy has caused a lot of trouble over the years and uh, these guys was on high alert because of uh, issues before? That could be something, too, involved with it. Well, yeah, would... it could be, but it doesn't justify shooting before you're sure whether or not he has a gun. Yeah, but don't you think some people just need to be... <laughs> <laughs> and it's back to the law of the wild west some people That's, hey buster some people just I need mean, killing i've been out here time and time again and i ain't coming back this town ain't big enough for the two of us <laughs> that's what i'm saying we're, we're not texas that, that's the rule of law in texas you know? yeah, what i'm just, saying i mean you deserve killing. at some point it's like i've told you and i've told you and i've told you you know <laughs> go ahead make my day yeah it's like Discipline in your kids. You yeah. Know, don't make me come back there. I'm telling you. Well, is this don't your make me lucky stop day? This car. <laughs> <laughs> and then don't the arm. Make me shoot you. The arm comes across the front seat. Man, we've <laughs> yeah. all been there. We've all been there. <laughs> Man, California Democrats considering wealth tax, including people who have moved out of state. How are they going to tax somebody who's done left the state? But that's what they're wanting to do. They want to do a wealth tax on people who's done pull the pin. How's that work? Y'all are. going to. They're going to tax them before they leave. Yeah, but some of them done left. They said it's going to try to tax people that's already left the state. So well, I don't know they how they're probably, going to. They probably still have holdings in the state that they can levy taxes on. Well, they just don't give up Put liens against. I don't know, man. Hey, I, I, are you going to be able to go to Cherokee County in the future? I was just thinking about this. You know, they're talking about this no, noise ordinance. What? Oh Lord! Here we go with more of this dang code enforcement crap. More, what is, what more is it than now? seventy decibels for more than five minutes. Well, that lets out the your, midnight your, express. Your cars make more noise than that, don't they? Yeah, seventy decibels. How much is? What, what's the scoop with that? Why are they want to do? Is that just the city or what is that? It's because no, this is the county. It's because of the crypto mining thing with all the noise that they're making. Right. Uh. But uh, they've made this. If they, uh, when they enact this, it's a class three misdemeanor, which is criminal. So according to decibelpro.app, Uh-oh. 70 yep. decibels is, is in the middle of this decibel range. It is equivalent to the sound level of a regular washing machine or the equivalent of driving inside of a car at 60 miles an hour. The environment inside of a car. Does it say mm-hmm. what kind of car? Because I'm telling you, my car is a little louder than seven. Hey, Packy, how loud is a rock band? I'll look it up. I mean, I Depends don't know. I mean, but I guess they're trying to do something with that crypto stuff over there, but it's kind of there now, is it not? Yeah, it's kind of like after the fact, and I wonder if some place like that would be subject to this ordinance or grandfathered in. Yeah. That's what I was wondering about that, too. But now, hadn't they put a thing on it where there can't be no more crypto mines over there? Uh, not yet. But, Pat, where is the decibel, like, where where is it relative to? Like, where do you have to be standing away from it to measure the decibels? Does that make sense? The, yeah, I, I get that, but it doesn't say where you have to be standing, how many feet or yards or miles well, you totally, have to be away. Because that that's, has to be part of an ordinance like that, because otherwise, you know, if you're whispering, that's... What, 20 decibels? Well, I or, suppose, you know what I mean? It, it, yeah, I suppose if you're at home and you're a half mile away from the crypto place, people are telling me that the, the decibel readings are 80 and 90 at their house. So I, well, I think Well, what about, that, the, are there not a rock quarry in, in Cherokee County? I mean, a how rock you, quarry? I, what about a sawmill? A sawmill, rock quarry, all that? I don't know how that's well, going. Well, so far they've exempted cities and the Indian Reservation – and any government operation. <laughs> it's like and, every, and everybody's got to go, except you, and you, 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 you. Except you, our you, favorite. You, you, you. Well, everybody's our favorite friends. They're not done yet because they're talking about exempting agriculture, which may already be exempt under North Carolina law. Well, they well, they exempt the Cherokee because they'll shoot you. They proved that last week. <laughs> <laughs> all, are, you, are you saying they're on the warpath? <laughs> we better exempt them, man, no doubt. 
I don't know, man. I, I just think you get, to, you know, you, you, a knee-jerk reaction is wrong. I think they need to think that out a little bit. I hate I hate all this stuff. I mean, honestly, I, you know, I know up here at City well, Hiawassee, they try to do all these, they call them, what do they call, what do they call it? Code enforcement. Now, it's not code, but it actually becomes code, and then they start stricting you down. You got less and less and less rights. We're in America, you know, and we can't do this. I mean, they even ban the Jake break up there. Well, remember now that this is not a, a law yet. They right. just introduced it last night. They're going to think about it some more and be back on the agenda next meeting, and there'll probably be public hearings after they. Uh, well, now is this is this crypto stuff? Is it not? Is it is it gaining speed or is it losing speed? I know we had that one guy that gave all the money to Biden and all them just got busted for what was his name? The little punk kid that had the funky hair. Sam Bankman Freed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, since you bring that topic up, I, I just heard something in the last day or two that there may be a change in the international SWIFT, the SWIFT banking system. That's the um, electronic transfer system that uh, allows uh, interbank transfers, bank wires, things like that. And um, when the U.S. Um, put sanctions on Russia, they got the SWIFT organization to take Russia off the SWIFT system, and Russia is uh, putting in supposedly some sort of new regulation starting in February, and supposedly, what I've heard is there may be a domino effect that from that point on, people are not going to be able to get their money out of the exchanges, the crypto exchanges, so that if you got now, if you have 100000 or more, and this is just what I've heard, i got to verify this, but if you're a fat cat and you got more than $100,000 worth of Bitcoin, you would still be okay. But if you're a little nobody like me, you know, where I bought, you know, $1,000 worth of Bitcoin a while back, um, you know, you, you may not be able to get your money off the exchange anymore. I think He's that's got a good. $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. <laughs> I think doing that's pretty good. good for yourself. All y'all rich folks know how us poor folks feel. We ain't got no money. Well, I, wait a second. I heard you're a Dogecoin millionaire. <laughs> yeah, I am. I you're think a when Doge you that up, I was going to see where I'm at on my yeah, let's, let's, Packy, uh, what's, Packy's what's investment the, tips. What's the balance of your Dogecoin account? Uh, let's see where we're at right now. 88 cents. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the total of what it's worth? I bought 374 Let's see, I bought, what is it? Nope. 374 shares, I guess. It would you be. weren't hodling correctly, so dude. I'm still hodling. I'm still hodling. Watch the little line. It's like it's supposed a, to go to the moon. It's still going down, down, down. Well, you should have used Sam Bankman fraud as your advisor. I I'm mean, on. Bitcoin has gained a lot in the past month. It has. 35%. It, it has been going yeah, up. Yeah, but it dropped like yeah, 125 yeah. the beginning of that, so I don't know. But the question is, if you can't get your money out, what good is it? Looks, Somebody get looks Daniel. Looks like the top was, was about 65000 and you're at 22000 Get now. Daniel yeah. DeWello on the phone, please, because I was sitting here thinking about this. Jim, you can weigh in on this. I actually bought Doge because Packy was my investment guy. Can I sue I him? I a disclaimer. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. I, I can't sue him. I'm taking you down. I'll give down. you all my Doge. Oh, man. Hey, keep in mind that Daniel's a personal injury attorney. Well, he might be able to. He can't do that other well, stuff. Well, he might. I mean, he can, but. <laughs> so now, now he's going to go after me for sexual no, no, harassment. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> Can he do that? <laughs> now, Stephen is, Stephen is going to allege that Packy accidentally or intentionally just shoved him just slightly. Yeah. And because of that, he's suffered mental trauma. And, and and then he can sue Pack. He's got mental trauma, all right. I got, that would explain a lot of things with Steven. Yeah. The mental trauma start. I, I, had, I, had, a a that mental I had a trauma. disclaimer, man. This does not constitute financial advice under no circumstances. Do anything that Packy ever tells you to do. Hey. That covers everything. What is this boy hey. meets world? That's some kind of a movie actor. I reckon he's going to run for the U.S. house out there somewhere. Do y'all know anything about that? No, I hadn't heard about that. Yeah, he's going to Boy Meets World Star is uh, running for California's 30th congressional district seat, which is that's currently a, held that, by Adam Schiff. That's appropriate in California. <clears throat> Whatever happened to Boy Meets Girl? I mean, come on. Oh, them days are over with. Yeah. Them low, days are over low, with. low, 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 low. They keep going low. like they're going. We're going to have to manufacture kids because they ain't going to come the old-fashioned way. So... <laughs> You're joking really? about that. 
<laughs> we'll have artificial dependence. Yeah. I you're guess gonna we have, should update it. You're going to have to get permission yeah. to procreate. It should yeah. be non-binary person meets world. Ah, there you go. Boy meets world. I don't know. Who knows? That's crazy, crazy world we live in. So, anyway, I guess we got we got anything to give away? We actually do. I've got a gift certificate for Marina Station. I went through all my gift certificates yesterday. Okay. And I've got one sitting there for twenty five dollars. See, Marina this is Station. what he does. He goes through I'm hoarding. He's hoarding. <laughs> <laughs> Which <laughs> ones can I keep for myself? <laughs> Shh, my precious. So tell us about it, man. What is it? It's a gift certificate for twenty five dollars for Marina Station. All right, that'll be good. So we come back. We're gonna do that. Pack, you got a question to ask? You? I got questions. <laughs> I know everybody's excited. I don't have answers, but I got questions. And if you guys haven't been there, it's really not really nice. They got a whole brand new menu, overlooks the water and everything. Super nice place. Marina Station you in know, New Harris. Yeah, I just miss you know, like Sherry when she did her questions, you know, what she'd ask like, Okay, in the alphabet, what letter comes after B? And then Pat Malone's like, in nineteen eighteen Hey. The war was started. I I thought my role was an upgrade. <laughs> Golly, <man. laughs> you asking questions and nobody. What did he ask yesterday? It was I was like, how am I supposed to know that? How many miles <laughs> underground does Stone Mountain extend to the east? <laughs> it's like, I, you guys didn't know that. Come on, everybody knows that. It's nine miles. Yeah, everybody knows. Ronnie that. Maxwell says Stephen would like to at least recoup his Dogecoin investment first before the sound ordinance is passed. Hey, I'm with you on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Who was that? That's that? Ronnie Maxwell. You know, he ain't asked for the camera to be changed one time today. He reckon why? It. Why? So so he could see you better, or so that he uh, won't see you? No, nah, you know, on Mondays and Fridays, I always like change the camera, change the camera. Copperhead Customs just said, "Why is it that the lawyer?" Has the best serial killer voice. <laughs> <laughs> you do got it, yeah. They, they, well, I've actually met some serial killers in in uh, in court. Golly, I met some. I convicted. I got I got one of them convicted. Yeah, that's crazy. And he went to the electric chair back in the days, in the ancient days, when you used to ride old Sparky. Yeah. How long did it take for him actually after you convicted him before they? Zapped him. Took about seven years. Well, that's not too bad. Seven years. Normally it's There's like a, That's still a long time. That's yeah. a long time. What else you got? Pack anything? Uh, let's see. Ronnie Maxwell says, with a 44 on your side, you were probably mooning people with the weight on your drawers. Yeah, pretty much looks <laughs> like a plumber walking down the road. Please, Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie, whoever you are, that, that just conjures up a picture. I just don't <laughs> no even know. Hey, no easy, visuals, They've been singing Lola in here for the last hour, so I don't know, man, what's going on with this thing. Brian Schmidt says, PB on one side, strawberry on the other. Toast the bread to get the PB melted and gooey. Hey, there's a way. Mm. Yeah, that's an idea. There and Copperhead Customs says even in Australia, they're going through a juvenile crime wave here at the moment, breaking into the house and stealing car keys to steal your car. And they don't even have he, – he, I mean, if you got to shoot somebody down there, you got to go to the government and ask for a gun. That's crazy. Yeah, you don't have anybody trying – they couldn't even start your car. That, you don't even worry. you got to <laughs> pop the hood and put that starter fluid in yeah, there. Yeah, you got to worry about stuff. mine. I ain't nobody going to steal my stuff anyway. I was just thinking about that. You don't have to worry about a wealth tax, Stephen. Yeah. I mean, you know – the. You can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. And pretty much know? nowadays, the best security on your car is to have a manual, isn't it? Yeah, stick shift. Yeah. Yeah, they ain't even making them anymore. Yeah, they ain't even making them more. That is the truth. He can't, my car is, yeah, honestly, it's got, it's like that Dodge truck out there. I yeah. watch it. He pop, no, no joke. He goes out there and uh, pops the hood to start his car. Yeah, you have to bang on it a little bit and get her going. But after she cranks, boy, she's ready to go. But down in Australia, I mean, if you're going to shoot somebody, you got to go fill out a paper and all that, put their name down to people and all that stuff you're going to shoot before they give you a gun. That's crazy, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> we got to get to break folks young harris water sports bring you the show today we sure do appreciate them they got all kinds of boats and uh accessories they got rvs i mean the place is full and ready to go summer's gonna be here and y'all gonna want to be on the lake and now is the time to buy so we'll be right back Young Harris Water Sports and RV now offering new RVs from top brands like Cedar Creek Fifth Wheels, Cottage and Villa Park Models, Salem Travel Trailers, No Boundaries Extreme Off-Road Towables, and more. Young Harris Water Sports and RV has the largest service center parts and accessory selection in the area, so there's no need to leave the mountains. Woo-hoo! Young Harris Water Sports and RV, located at 3676 Highway 76 or online at yhmarinandrv.com. Let's go! 
If you've been injured, you don't need to go to Atlanta or Gainesville to find a lawyer. The law office of Daniel Duello specializes in accident cases and is based in Blairsville. I used to defend insurance companies and saw their attempts to pay less through pressure and delays. Now I want to use that experience to help you get treated fairly. Just search for Daniel Duello or call 706-603-3036 and I'll see you in Blairsville. It's 706-603-3036. It's a cold winter night, and out of the fog comes the most wicked, awesome pickup you've ever seen. Floor lighters, LED lights, and fog lights, and a killer bed cover for keeping the load dry. There's no doubt where the accessories came from. Rose Auto, the only way to go. Whether up Bell Mountain or down by the water, trust your truck accessories with Rose Auto in Blairsville for an experience you never thought possible. Rose Auto. Haul your truck up to Rose Auto on the Murphy Highway. Improving our patients' dental health, one smile at a time. Dr. Jared Houston, Dr. Courtney Marshall, and Dr. Tom Mims at Mims Family Dentistry live by that principle every day. Receive expert care with a broad range of services, from preventive dentistry and periodontal treatments to dental implants and orthodontics. Or maybe it's just about perfecting a beautiful smile. So if you're looking for a new dentist, consider Mims Family Dentistry on Bill Hughes Avenue in Murphy or visit MimsFamilyDentistry.com. Do you have eye problems? Ophthalmologist Dr. Dan Eichenbaum, a graduate of Yale Medical School and the Bascom Palmer Eye Institute, has the training and experience to give your precious eyes the expert care they need. Whether it's cataract surgery, macular degeneration, diabetic eye disease, or glaucoma, call Dr. Dan Eichenbaum, 828-837-5404 in Murphy or 706-745-9777 in Blairsville. Medicare and insurance accepted. Quality eye care, regardless of your ability to pay. Attention podcasters, church audio mixers, or people who love our radio stations and think you could help. WJUL and WJRB are hiring, and you might be a perfect fit. If you've worked in radio before, great. If not, we still want to hear from people who are creative. So you make cool YouTube videos? You've ever written professionally? You like going to county meetings? Please call WJUL and WJRB or send a resume and letter to our Facebook page. The staff and I look forward to hearing from you. The Morning Dish. The Tuesday Morning Dish is powered by Young Harris Water Sports. You want to deal with people who love boats? You've come to the right place. From a new covered storage facility to boat consignment services, it's all in one place with Young Harris Water Sports. And by request, we had a request. Want to hear Lola. Love Lola. I love that song. She said, I just love Lola. So here's to you, girl. Y'all give us a call. We had all kinds of requests for music, but uh, we're giving away uh, 706-379-9770. And we're, what are we giving away, Pack? Marina Station. Yeah. She's probably going to call back. She said she hated that song, so. <laughs> <laughs> give us a call. Answer the question Pat's got, and you can win, win, win. 25 bucks, right? Yep. 706-379-9770. I reckon Buzz Aldridge uh, is getting got married. 93 years that. old, marrying his longtime girlfriend. She's like 60 or something, 63 years old. 30 years younger. Wow. You think she's after his money? I mean, at 93, I love you, honey. Right. <laughs> this is the one. This is the <laughs> one. I guess at 93, it don't matter. He's, she can have it, right? Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I reckon they've dated for a long time. Yeah. That's what it said. How they got? Well, yeah. Maybe she actually loves him. Yeah, she loves all that money. Don't you think? You think it's all about the money? It's huh? all about all that all base. About, about the, the money. base. Yeah, no doubt. So, anyway. Is the phone ringing, Packy? That's probably because you it It's ringing song. off the hook. Yeah, 706. People are desperate to talk to us. Yeah. I reckon that. What's her name, that Maxwell gal? Uh, Jelaine. Yeah, she's actually teaching etiquette classes in prison. How about that? Oh. <laughs> Sweet. That's, that's a useful <laughs> skill. <laughs> when you're knowing well, which fork to use at the best hall. Right? Yeah, I'm with you. I don't man. know. Maybe she can teach them how, you know, if you're going to blackmail politicians over sexual misconduct, here's how you can do it very politely. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't understand. You know, we had that other gal on that, Zoe. Uh, she's an etiquette. 
teacher, you know, and I don't understand, like, you go to these fancy restaurants, which I ain't been to many of them, but they got, like, 14 forks out there and 35 spoons and different knives and cups and all that. I'm like, just give me the little salad fork and a big old glass of unsweet tea. I forgot where I drink unsweet tea all the time. And just turn me loose. I thought you preferred paper plates and plastic I'm cutlery. I'm with that, too. But <laughs> who come up with all this, though? Who come it's up with all this? Emily Post. But why is she the girl that says, hey, this is the way you're supposed to eat? She's the etiquette. Etiquette. And the easy way to remember, Stephen, is just start from the outside and work your way in. I don't want to give up my little salad fork. That's my favorite one. I'm, I'm with you, man. I don't understand. I had one person ask me one time if I wanted a glass to put my beer in. And you're like, are you kidding? <laughs> what? Why would I want that? <laughs> what a unique concept. Why dirty up another dish? And why they give you <laughs> they give you big old big old wine glasses and they just put like a little drop in the bottom of it. Not my well, that's just so they can make the more <laughs> make more money off of you in well, the is restaurant. This just a swig. Come on, man, fill that thing up. You know? well, <laughs> well, at Packy's house, it's glug 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 glug. Packy's house, they just set the bottle out there. We've got, gotta, we've got a glass. Or what? No joke. We've got a glass that is a wine glass and says on there, but you. Can do, but it fits a whole bottle of wine in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a wine hey, glass right there. I want to know why Stephen knows about wine glasses I, I in know. restaurants. Well, I try to run with the big dogs. You know, I try to act like a big dog, but I stick out like a sore thumb. You know, when you're out of your you're out of your 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 element, and you know they stick you in with these fancy people, and you try to act like they do, and they know you don't. They're all laughing at you. That's that's pretty much me. Stephen tried it once, but he didn't like all that <laughs> swanky California Cabernet and all that Man, stuff. Man, the first time my mama put a tie on me, I thought I was tied up. I just stood there. I thought, Lord, here I am. I ain't going nowhere. She's got me tied up. We got another comment over there just come across, I think, Pac. Ronnie Maxwell says beer is good in a frosted mug. Frosted mug. I, I, I drink it so fast, Ronnie, I don't even know what it tastes like. Well, that's like when, yeah. you, when you eat, do you eat with one hand or do you put both hands on the table like a – What's wrong with just sticking your face into it, Stephen? I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, with people, some people eat with one hand in their lap and another in their. They just eat with one hand. Do y'all do that? You got to eat with one hand and put your other hand in your lap. Do you eat with two hands? I put both hands on. Yeah, how do you hold your biscuit? I mean, you know, you can't you hold have something to stop with. <laughs> you got to hold your biscuit with one hand and eat with the other. You know what I'm saying? Do you just eat with one hand? I don't. I don't know that sopping is in the etiquette book. How about slopping? Or, slopping, yeah, no, slopping is in there. That's one of about, the, don't, about do plopping. not do this. That's what I'm doing. Etiquette by Stephen Phillips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you slop. <laughs> when you slop, you slop with your pinky out. Yeah, there you go. Stephen, yeah. I got an idea. You need to write, it'll be a bestseller. Etiquette by Stephen Phillips. You got to spell it wrong, though. Yeah, yeah. Etiquette. Uh, now, Pat, when you drink your, your wine and stuff, do you put your little pinky out? No. No, you don't. <laughs> no. Pat likes Jameson. Yeah. Who's and that? you don't you don't scotch. put any fingers out. You keep it wrapped or around Irish the shot glass. Okay, yeah. so what is scotch? I get it all mixed up. You got scotch whiskey and you got regular whiskey and you got moonshine. I know what moonshine is, but what is scotch whiskey? Made it's just in a Scotland. variety of whiskey. It's what now? It's just a variety of whiskey. It's primarily made in Scotland. Right. And it's made in an a, a, an unusual way, not the way whiskey is made. It's aged more. Well, I don't, don't care for scotch. I like Irish whiskey. Irish? So Irish whiskey, yeah. That's what Jameson's is, isn't it? That's what Jameson is, yeah. Bushmills, uh, Yellow. There's a whole variety of uh, Irish whiskeys. You know, I know a guy that makes wine, but he runs it through this cooking process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, we want to give a big Called thanks. Called distilling? To, yeah, he distills it. We want to thank Daniel Duello. You can check out his website at duellolaw.com, and you can give him a call at 706-603-3036. I'm fixing to call Daniel Duello right now. I'm taking Packy to court. Get my 300 and something bucks back, dang crook. Anyway, Jim, thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. I enjoyed it, and we've succeeded in wasting another hour, haven't we? There you go. We'll be doing it again tomorrow. Hey, Copperhead, man, go back to bed. I don't know if it's morning or not, but I guess it's night down there. He's going to bed, so anyway, we'll talk to you all tomorrow. W249DB and WJULAM, Well, look at here. Guess who's number one in the Nielsen?